Um, hey guys, today we're going to start um, uh, factoring polynomials and our first step in factoring polynomials is um, you could argue is the most important step and that is factoring out a greatest common factor, the GCF. Okay. So um, our objective today in factoring, we're really going to want to convert an expression from a polynomial form into a factored form. When we say a polynomial form, basically that's an addition problem. Polynomial form means a sum of terms, a sum of monomial terms. And a factored form means basically uh, two or more things that are being multiplied. So it's like saying it's going from an addition problem to a multiplication problem. Okay. So, um, and what uh, we're doing today is we are going to, uh, we say, factor out a greatest common factor. And a greatest common factor, as we're going to talk about today, is going to be a monomial that is co common to all terms in the polynomial that we're factoring. So it has to show up in all terms, um, and we are going to, and we like to say, factor it out. Okay, and when we say factor it out, we're really using the distributive property, but we're using it backwards. So we can kind of think of it as undistributing something. So what we're going to be undistributing is a monomial that will be in all terms, and we are uh, going to un, uh, uh, undistribute that greatest common factor. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, what we're talking about here. Okay. So our first problem is the uh, binomial 5x cubed plus 10x, okay? And it says factor out all the common factors. Now again, this, at this point right now, it's a polynomial. I have this term plus this term. Each of the terms are monomials. This is in its polynomial form. What we're going to do when we uh, factor something, we want to turn it into a factored form. Instead of having two things that we're adding together, we want to have a couple things that we're multiplying. Now, one of the things that you should be aware of is when we take out um, a factor, when I say take out or factor out something, um, if we start with a binomial, polynomial, what we're going to end with is a binomial. In other words, two monomial terms, but what we're going to be taking out of this binomial will be a factor that will be the greatest common factor. Okay. So the first thing we have to look at each monomial and look at the, their factor. So 5x cubed is 5 times x times x times x plus 10x, which is 5 times 2 times x. And we identify what is common. I think we can all see that the 5 is common in both, and both have a x that's in common. Okay. So like I said, what we're going to do is turn this into a factored form. We're going to have a binomial here, and what's going to be pulled out will be something called the greatest common factor. So we look at everything that's common, that's why it says all common factors, and we're going to pull out the 5 and the x. So as we pull out that 5 and the x, we're really undistributing that greatest common factor. We're just going backward from what we've done before. So we take out the 5x, now what's left behind as my binomial? Well, these two guys didn't come out, x times x, that's x squared, plus the 2. So that's my binomial that we say is left behind, and we've now went from a polynomial form to terms that are being added together to a factored form, which I'm multiplying this times this, and that's what factoring is. Okay, why don't you go ahead and give this one a try. Okay, so just like before, um, we have a uh, binomial, and what we're going to do is it's in a polynomial form now. We want to turn it into a uh, factored form. And to do that, I have two terms that are being added. What I want to have is um, a multiplication problem. So I'm going to be multiplying a greatest common factor times a binomial. So there's going to be two terms here. So what's common in both? Well, I see here that well, only an x. There's one x in each of these. So that's all that I can take out. I can take out an x. And what's left behind in my two terms, right, and I'm going to have my plus sign here, x squared plus 3. That's what's left behind. Okay? Let's try another one. Go. Okay, uh, for number 3, again, we are going to break these down. 
Um, again, notice that I do have a binomial, and I want to turn it's a bin it's a polynomial, right? I'm adding these two things, and I'm going to turn this into this factored form. First, I do that. I take a look at each of the monomials, identify all its factors, see what's common. I see I have a six in both, and I have two x's in both. So that's going to be my greatest common factor. It's going to come out, and remember what's going to be left behind. It's going to be a binomial, okay? Because remember, we're undistributing. We're taking these out. Right? Leaving behind what? That x plus 2. Now to check yourself, you can always work backwards. Does it really make sense? And if I work backwards, 6x squared times x, of course, is 6x cubed, plus 6x squared times 2 is 12x squared. Okay? Let's try another one. Go ahead. Okay, here, just because we have more variable factors, it doesn't really change what we're doing. I still have up here a binomial, and I'm still taking each one of these monomials and breaking it up, looking for common factors. I see I have the 4's common, I have an A common, and I have a couple of B's common. So I'm going to pull that out, the 4AB squared, that's coming out, and then what's left behind? 3A squared plus 4B squared. Okay, give that one a shot. Okay, now here we have a trinomial. The rules really don't change except the fact that because we start out with a trinomial, when we turn this into a, uh, uh, this, this trinomial polynomial, when we turn this into the factored form, we're still, we're pulling out a greatest common factor, but what's going to be, uh, we'll say left behind, is still going to be a trinomial. So all we're doing is we are undistributing its greatest common factor. In this case, that greatest common factor was x squared. Okay, let me try this one. Okay, this usually is a tricky one the first time anybody does it. Um, if you did it, I would challenge you to work backwards. Whatever you got when you did it, see if you work backwards by distributing and see if you get back to here. That's a good way to check because I'm suspicious that probably some of you didn't. Let's look what's going on here. Remember, I have a binomial and what I want to have at the end here is, well, I still want a binomial and I want to take out the greatest common factor. So, what is the greatest common factor? Well, 14 is 2 times 7 and then x squared and then 7 times x. And so what's common? Well, I see the x is common with both and I see an or the 7 is common with and an x is common with both. So obviously, the greatest common factor is 7x. Okay? Well, once I see that, what's left behind? 2x plus, ooh, is, is it 0? Well, if I put 0 here, would that make sense if I worked backwards to check it? Eh, no, it can't be 0. 7x times what is going to get me back to 7x? Well, it's that factor here that you don't, we usually don't write. It's that one. So our answer is 7x times the binomial 2x plus 1. In other words, when the greatest common factor is one of the terms, it doesn't go away. Always will be left behind is that one, which is a factor in every monomial. Okay? Let's try this one. Okay, this is another challenging one just because of these negative signs. Okay. And always think of that, that negative as a negative 1. Okay, so this, this term right here is plus a negative 48x squared. So when we look what's common, we have to pull out that negative as well as everything else that's common. So we have the greatest common factor is negative 16x squared plus what's left behind? x plus 3. Okay, um, this is your uh, homework for this evening. Okay, please check the, um, uh, the answers. And uh, if you're so motivated, there's the answers so you can pause and uh, check your work as you go. Okay, um, hasta la vista.